Welcome to Outside the Box Reviews, where if someone asks if I'm a god, I say yes. Today we're looking at the Diamond Select, Ghostbusters Select, Wave 1, Ray Stans figure. And if you watched my review of the Winston Zedmore figure, you've pretty much seen this guy. Almost everything on this figure is the same. We obviously get a fresh head sculpt. We obviously get repainted non-gloved hands. We get a new belt on this figure and one unique accessory, but pretty much everything else is exactly the same, which means gonna have a lot of the same issues. So let's jump right in and take a closer look. Ray comes with his big ass display base, the mirror image to the one that came with Lewis. Once again, not entirely sure if I have the right side, but I think this is the correct side that comes with Ray. We get the pillar back here in the corner, the little brick section down here, the platform up front to hold the terror dog, some of the roof details, paint job on here. It's pretty much non-existent. We do get a little bit of brown dry brushing over top of it. Plastic itself is gray with these kind of speckled in white or silver pieces to give it that stony effect. And it's freaking huge. There's pretty much not much else to say about this thing. I cannot wait to see how ridiculous this rooftop diorama ends up being. We've seen pictures of it, but I don't think I'm going to really feel the full effect until I see it in person. So this figure, I believe we get the same hand selection we did with Zed Moore. We have the gloved hands with a tight grip on them. You can see once again, the fingernails are right there sculpted in, which is really weird. This has the dice roll style hinge, so it will move up and down on that axis as opposed to like an in and out motion that you get with a normal hinge. And then all these gloved hands come with the sleeve that goes over the back of them between the wrist and the hand that continues the full effect of the glove. Now, my Ray does come with another right hand that matches Zed Moore's the more opened grip, but my additional left hand is that same tight grip that we already got. Same dice roll hinge in it, as opposed to this other one that has the kind of in and out motion with that hinge. And what I'm thinking is that something got messed up and I got the wrong hand here. I got a second dice roll hand, as opposed to getting the correct, more opened hand. Then we get basically the exact same hands in flesh tone. So you have the in and out hinge, bare hands with a more open grip, tighter grip hands with the dice roll hinge on them. And then the two additional right hands, the tighter grip here with the dice roll hinge for holding the trap, though he doesn't come with a trap, and the wide grip right hand for the walkie talkie. Speaking of a walkie talkie, Ray does come with his. Exact same one we got with Zed Moore, just a black piece of plastic sculpted to look like a walkie-talkie. I think it does a decent job of doing that. And they do have the holster for it right here on his belt. You could slide that right into place. And then Ray's unique accessory are his goggles. These are a big rubberized piece of plastic. We have the black strap going over the top there. And then a nice kind of army green color for the rest of them. We have the lenses coming out here in the front. I actually think this came out pretty good. It's not super, super detailed, but it looks enough like it does in the movie. And I really appreciate him having this to kind of give him a different look. It's soft rubber enough, so it's easy to put on his head. And what I find is best is to kind of get over the back of his head first. And then you could either position it there above his eyes, like I had at the beginning of the video, probably a little better than that. Or you can get them to go all the way down over his face. Doesn't feel like it's going to scuff anything because they are soft plastic, but then you could have them in total bug eye mode with these goggles on, which I think is really cool. And then last but not least, we get the proton beam. Same thing we got with Zed Moore, the orange kind of core to it, not super flexible. Then this rubberized blue piece going around the outside, we get the crackling electric power shooting off of it. We do once again get the peg sticking out the back, but nowhere to put it in the gun itself. And as you can see here, the end of the proton wand is just a solid piece. So probably take a drill bit to that or something and hollow it out. Though this plastic's kind of flimsy. I don't know if it's going to hold up to having that extra weight coming off the end of it. Proton wand, while we're looking at it, is nicely detailed. We have the red wire here, the silver tip, front hand grip, some more silver detail there. Coming around to the back handle. I just still kind of wish they would have put, I believe there were some like red switches or buttons back here. In the movie, kind of wish I would have included those as well. We also also do get the little v-shaped clip that i freaking hate now for getting it on the proton pack and honestly i believe i'm gonna mod this and see what i could do with it for a head sculpt once again i don't feel like they quite captured the actor likeness this kind of looks like dan Aykroyd from some angles and other angles it really doesn't i guess it's decent somebody commented on the zedmore video that it's very soft sculpting on these figures and i have to agree it's very kind of just squishy looking we do have some paint slop up here in his hair and also coming around the back of his head 
it gets a little messy there as well. Going on the front of the suit, I will say the silver detailing for the zippers here is better than it was on Zedmore. Also seems to be less of the black wash effect going on here. I actually kind of miss it. Looks a little flat here in the tan of the jumpsuit. We do have his name stamped there on his chest. Well done Ghostbuster logo there in the sleeve. Once again, the elbow pads feel like they need some additional dirt and grime. They just look way too clean, but they are a soft rubber piece that sits over top of the arm itself. You can see how the gloves fit on here going over the wrist. Same straps for the Proton Pack. Still a little too bright green in my opinion. Really need to dirty these up some. But I still love this Proton Pack. I love all the different colors, all the ribbon cable, all the cool details here. Still some issues with the stickers not necessarily being where they should be here. But I love that the details are included. And overall I think it looks pretty decent. Just not perfect. And if we swing around to the side here, we can see the area where the clip would go for holding the neutrino wand and mine's broken. Came that way out of package. So I think I'll be contacting Diamond CS with this, seeing what they can do for me to get a better version of this figure because now I've got two problems with them. Fortunately, they did take really good care of me last time when I had an issue with a Universal Select Creature from the Black Lagoon. They sent me out another figure real nice and quick. So hopefully I have an equally good experience with them this time. We do get a slightly different belt here on Ray. On Zedmore, we had the trap and walkie-talkie here on this tab. Here we just have the walkie-talkie. We have some of the same kind of style clips hanging down here, but they're in different locations. We have that weird circuit board thing coming around the front, and then we have the trap holster here on the back, even though we don't actually get a trap with Ray. We do have the yellow cable coming out that wraps around to the knee. This is actually a more rigid plastic they use to make this cable. I'm actually a little afraid it's going to break if you're not too careful with it. More wrinkled detail going down the legs, more seams and everything. Everything. We have the zippers on the side of the boots that look pretty cool. Though not a whole lot of detail paint-wise throughout the rest of the boots. Just kind of a solid black color. And we do get peg holes at the bottom of his feet. For articulation, Ray has a ball joint at the neck. So you can look a little bit up, a little bit down, and rotate side to side. It's funny now realizing that Louis Tully had a hinge disc in the neck and the Ghostbusters don't. Kind of would have rather the Ghostbusters have it. Pin socket shoulder, so it'll go forward back as well as out to the side. Get a hinge, single joint, and rotation there at the elbow. The wrist can rotate, and then depending on which hinge you have, you either get this kind of in and out motion here, or the up and down motion here. Got a mid torso ball joint so you can rotate and move a little bit forward and back with it. Not a whole lot, hindered really because of the backpack there. We also rotate at the waist. Legs will move forward a little bit back, out to the side. We rotate at the upper leg. We get a double joint there at the knee. At the foot, we can hinge forward back and we do get an ankle pivot. And this is the pose that really makes me wish he had double jointed elbows. It's just that you really can't have him look like he's reaching to grab the proton wand from the backpack. This is really about the closest you can get to it and it's still kind of wonky looking. Double jointed elbows would have really let him just look like he was grabbing the wand and kind of ready to go to battle. And overall, it's weird because I feel like I kind of got my frustration out working with the Zedmore figure. So I'm a little more calm in doing this review, but the same flaws are still there. This figure just had some other random issues too that make him crappy. So I'll give this one the same slight not recommend Zedmore got. A lot of potential here, but a lot of problems problems too. And honestly, I think this figure just feels better because not having that clip to attach the neutrino wand, I can't even try to mess with that and I can't get frustrated at it because it's not there. I'm honestly considering kind of reworking those pieces and trying to see if I could just put a little piece of metal on the wand itself and put a magnet inside the backpack and just let it magnetically attach. I think that might be worth it since I'm going to have to get a new version of Ray anyway to fix these issues. If I get to keep this figure, I might just try that and try the modifications and see if it works and if it does we'll go from there and despite me giving three slight not recommends in this wave i'm still stupidly excited for the next one the next wave is gonna have the other two ghostbusters as well as dana barrett so I've yet another version of Sigourney Weaver to throw on my shelf. And if, in some weird way, if they were to stop at that point, I'd probably be pretty happy because that's kind of the main characters of the film. But I guess what's really making me look forward to more figures in this line isn't that next wave. It's what comes after. Getting the Terror Dogs, getting Slimer, getting Gozer. Those are the things that really make me happy. And, well, we're going to get Janine and Dick List down the line, too. Those I really couldn't care less about. But I guess I'll pick them up since I'm building this diorama base anyway. And then I'll have to figure out what the hell 
well to do with that monstrosity of a display base because damn. Make sure you check me out on Instagram using name Outside the Box Reviews. Also follow me on Facebook, link below. And until next time, if there's something strange on YouTube, who are you going to call? Outside the Box Reviews.